sweat in the cowboy's blood. Once again, you have stumbled into what many will call your guilty pleasure. A lot of folks say that's your guilty pleasure right here. And sometimes, hey, it might be. I'm not here to judge. I'll leave that to the to the rest of the internet people. But anyway, this is what I think they call that their their weekly guilty pleasure is right here on the Pepper Stewart Show because each and every week it's a train wreck waiting to happen you just tuned in just watching for that watching for that crash because you, you, you know you know it's gonna happen each and every week good god that's going too far but it's not because it happens everybody sees it each and every every week so you know what but but you guys are tuned in well that's where you're wrong but i'm not wrong uh stuff's going down we got stories we got stuff we got guests. Uh, we're going to talk about some gunfighting. Um, Old West style gunfights. We're going to talk about that tonight. We've got a special guest that's going to visit with us for a little while and talk about some Old West style gunfights and stuff like that. Uh, beef is in the news. So we're going to talk about some beef. we got beef stuff for you. Um, that's going down. Uh, Angus, the American Angus Association. Has dropped another bombshell on us. We're going to throw it in your eyeballs or your ear holes, depending on how you watch. You got, uh, I think there's, we're running 50 to 75,000 people are watching uh, each episode. And you've got tons and tons that just, they're they're on the road. They they don't, they do not want to look at us and burn their eyeballs. So they just do podcasts. They just listen to us on the podcast, which that's fine too. You can watch, you can listen. It's up to you. You pick your poison. However you want it, you can get it. That's what we're all about, giving it to you. Each and every week right here on the Pepper Stewart Show. So with that, what we're going to do, or what I'm going to do, since I'm rolling so low today, but not so low you can't hear me, Tex, his wife has got the whoosh on him. Man. Hey, he's married. He's a married man now. I guess, you know, the first, the first, you know, first year of marriage or so, you kind of, you know, she's got that tight leash. She's like, get in here, clean this house do these dishes, cook me dinner, stuff like that. That I don't know. Maybe not. That's just what I heard. But anyway, that's what's going downtown, Brown, like a rodeo clown. What I'm going to do is throw some stuff at you because I know you want to, I know you want to see it. Um, man, I've got, I've got so many stories. If you have not visited pepperstewart.com and looked around at the news stories that we have, we've got tons and tons of news stories um, from what's going on in the in the world of ag, agriculture, especially right now in South Texas, there's a drought going on. I guess I'll tell you about that here in a little bit, but yeah, there's a drought going on down in, uh, in South Texas. So we'll tell you about that as well. And if you're down in South Texas, like a lot of our viewers are, there is assistance for you guys because it, I mean, it's tough. Going through the drought, we went through a drought up here in North Texas a couple years back. And those of you in South Texas, it's it's rough. And so, you know, anything, anything will can help. And that's kind of what is going on. But what I've got for you guys right now is uh, a little tidbit that uh, Angus Association has got out for you guys to check out. It's 12 Star Ranch out in Louisiana. Now, I went ahead and told you they're in Louisiana, but. I just want to know, after the first couple minutes, could you tell this is going down Louisiana? I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to throw it out for you. Check out this, a little excerpt from the Angus Association, a little excerpt about Angus cattle. And when we come back, I'm just going to jump in stories.
So being Cajun, probably the biggest or funnest thing in Cajun is maybe just the way we talk. No matter where we go in the country or anywhere, they, they figure out you're from Louisiana. You know, we know where you're from, you're from Louisiana. 12 Star over here, we, we run about 135 head of mama cows, and every October we have our bow sale, and we sell about 45 bows, and we care about maybe 15 to 20 heifers. I guess we have farm in, in, a, in the Roussel blood, because in the, in the early 1700s is when we have records of our family farming in Louisiana. There's nothing like Louisiana when it comes down to food and, and you know, we go crabbing, we go fishing. You know, where we're crabbing today, that, that was our backyard, that was our playground and growing up as kids, and still is. One of the interesting things is every section of Louisiana has their own culture, and I took a fiddle lesson in Lafayette just so I can learn the, the music culture of Lafayette. We have a jam group we call as the the P-Town Rambler, and we just play music from all spectrums, you know, and, and we just like to entertain and play, and it's just a way to forget about the rest of the world. We like to have a good time. On a full-time basis, what we do is we own a store called Roussel's, and it's a, it's a jewelry gift store. I just fell in love with the diamond business and, and everything that aspect of it and dealing with that customer and the emotional side of, of selling diamond rings. I believe that, I guess, God sends you with certain gifts, and, and, and when something touches your heart, you know, forget about anything else you're doing, chase it. So when we started uh, raising Angus cattle in South Louisiana, I remember going to a sale with my neighbor, an uh, all breed production sale, bow sale, and it was quick to notice that the Angus cattle were selling faster and higher than the rest of the breeds. And then I went to a female sale with a friend, and same thing happened. Angus cattle all sold, they had demand for them, the rest of the breeds were a little sluggish, and I'm like, okay, I'm, you know, why would you raise anything out? I was snake bitten with, with Angus cattle. And then it was like, all right, I want to grow me a herd that produces and, and be respected in the state of Louisiana. Everything was new to me. Being a first generation Angus breeder, but being in a retail business, we knew that customer service was A number one. And that was our first priority, customers and raising good cattle. And I know trends come and go, but if I get a vision in my mind of what I want, then I, I'm not one that's gonna stray off or be convinced to go a different way. I just felt like that Angus mama was just a great mama and, and the bullet had a demand for it and trying to breed things that are maternal and low birth weight with a lot of growth. And, and that was sort of like our goal for the last probably 10, 12 years on that. On the rewarding side of the cattle, kids just growing up in the junior side of Angus, you know, I mean, they would say, what are y'all doing here? You know, your jewelry still on us. But we understood that if you, your kids had to take care of the animals and the responsibility they learn, you know, they're the future of everything. You want them to express ideas because it's a changing world out there. You know, since having retail stores, you have to get away from there. You can have the hardest day of work and get here and even and fall in love with the outside world, you know, just getting your hands dirty and ride through your cows and, and all your problems go away. Something about being next to the Angus cattle, it's just, a, it's just some mystique about it. All right, man, we got stuff going on. Hope you enjoyed that from the American Angus Association. They've always, always, always got some good stuff for you guys. And uh, we share it with you, let you guys see it, because you're going to like it. I like it, you like it, we all like it. Um, if you caught the audio version last episode, you're going to think you're in deja vu. But uh, I'm going to give it to you one more time. Um, 
the reasoning for this is uh, in a couple of months, maybe I guess a month from now, a matter of fact, since today is the 1st of August, next month, I will be on a plane once again across the big pond, headed to Ireland. So I'm going to Ireland to see what's going on in our land. And in the process of doing my research, I stumbled across a story, okay? And I was looking at different venues, different events, you know, Western style that goes on in Ireland because I thought, you know, maybe I want to catch something going on over there and check it out while I'm there uh, because we're already going to Paris, Texas, which Paris, Texas is right down the road from me where I live. But Paris, Texas is also a Texas style bar in Kilkenny, Ireland, named after the movie. Paris, Texas, which I still haven't seen yet. I need to go watch that movie because apparently the movie is what inspired this restaurant bar called Paris, Texas in Ireland. Matter, and it goes as far as having a Texas chef influence the meals over there. So I'm going to see how authentic that's going to be. Because we'll be in Kilkenny for probably about a week over there. And uh, that's on the list to... Uh, Check out a couple of days. So anyway, so in my studies of Ireland and the Western way of life in Cowboys, I stumbled across a story called Ireland Cowboys. And it piqued my interest. I want to know what this is about. So here's what this story tells us. Ask any dude ranch greenhorn who is set on the fork saddle in the American cattle drive. And he's going to say, Something about Texas Longhorns and Dodge City. You ask that grizzly veteran in the plains about who held the first cow drive, and he's going to agree with the dude. And citing chapter and verse of this wildly <laughs> known but never disputed American myth, they'd both be wrong. Cowboys came from Ireland. No, that's all right. The real story of America's first cattle drive would shock many old cowboys and bring a self-justified chagrin to any eastern tenderfoot. It's one of the lost secrets of the cattle drive story, and it could not have occurred in a more unlikely place. It's a buccaneer. Buccaneer beef. All right, buccaneer beef. You know where the buccaneers... You know what they do? The Buccaneers? They put on their bucking hats. Uh, as unlikely as it seems, Boston was the first American cattle town. Boston? Boston? Cow hunts are pushing cow herds down Main Street more than 200 years before anyone in New England ever heard of Texas. So was this before clam chowder or after? Um... The islands of the Caribbean in the early 1600s were infested with pirates. These freebooters were named the Buccaneers, which is the French the French term for smokehouse is boucan. So if you're in France, you say boucan, they take you to the smokehouse. Uh, the Buccaneers were a group of vagrants and renegade galley slaves who butchered wild cattle and smoked cured beef into long strips called charquet. Or beef or, or jerky. So that's where beef jerky come from. Uh, by the, that's what the English called it. And the ship captains who bought it, they called it jerky. Imagine, they, imagine because that's it. It's like beef jerky, they, you jerked on it. Of course, they spent, on, they spent a lot of time on a ship. Uh, they did some jerking, apparently. Um, where did it go? Where's, where's, the rest, where's the rest of the story, Paul Harvey? Youngsters are going, what is Paul Harvey? 1647, in the year 1647, uh, the number of horses in Massachusetts had increased so quickly that the general court passed a branding law. And we're talking 1647. They passed a branding law. All animals were doubly branded, first with the symbol of the township in which it was located, and secondly, with the registered brand of its owner. So your town and your owner was branded on your horse. America's first 
cattle roundup during the fall of 1654. 1654. The cattle were brought in, branded, and then herded into the new corrals of the new cattle town of Boston. Allegedly, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to dive into this when I get over there. On a crisp spring morning in 1655, a fellow by the name of John Perchon looked at his crew of mounted men waiting before him. There was no artist re- artist uh, present to record the rig these cowboys wore, like the Texans who rode a cow trail hundreds of years later must have dressed functionally in durable work clothes. Jackets, vests, stitched from moose hides, or deer skins were common uh, garments at that time. You know, home sp- homespun shirts, buckskin breech- breeches, buckskin breeches, fur chaps, leather boots, shiny with bear grease, would have graced many of young riders in that day. Uh, during the three-week trip ahead of them, heavy dark wool capes would keep them warm during the day and serve as blankets at night. Uh, another thing shared with the Cowboys yet born, though they came from diverse backgrounds, different countries, though some were slaves, some indigenous servants, some were free men, they all shared the common love of adventure and horses. Uh, they were America's first Cowboys about to ride into history. You know, old John Perchin gave the first signal to head them up and move them out. Uh, many of the daily events encountered by the America's First Cowboys may be locked away in a 300-year-old document, a series of records kept by Perchon, and a system of shorthand that he invented that has never been deciphered. So we're talking, there's some ancient secrets locked away right here. Uh, by 1755, we're 100 years after that, by 1750, Cattle drives of more than 2,000 horses and cattle guarded by whip-cracking cowboys were a common sight along the cart roads connecting Baltimore, New York, Philadelphia, and Boston. These drives created the first three roads linking the northern and southern colonies. Finally, finally, by the time of the Revolutionary War in 1776, the term cowboy was commonly used from Maine to Georgia to, to describe illiterate Roughnecks herding cattle in backcountry. It grew to have such a derogatory reputation that cattle herdsmen in the East adopted the English term drovers. Drovers. You ever check out the magazine online, Drovers? That's where it comes from. Uh, the word cowboy would not be popular for a hundred more years in some obscure little place called Texas. I don't know. I'm in Texas. I don't know anything about that. I was not here in the 1600s, but that's going to be what I'm checking out. When I get over there and land on the other side of the globe, I want to know about this. So I've been, I'm, I'm, I'm tossing it up here because should I go ahead and throw down a master hatter's of Texas hat and roll over to Ireland or just, you know, chuck on a, uh, cap, you know, and, and kind of glide under the radar i don't know that's that's up that's up to you guys you guys let me know what you think and then uh we'll go from there but with that the next thing that's going to happen i've held off long enough i've got these stories over here these stories don't mean jack what does mean something is this guy who is a gunslinging fool from tombstone arizona somewhere in arizona is he in arizona is he in new mexico is he in california is he just out there in the west i don't know you don't know who knows he knows and with that i want to come back with the man with the planet knows about guns old west and reenactments all right right here on the pepper stewart show we did say we're going to talk about some stuff going on out that way towards the desert Stuff, matter of fact, stuff just happened over that way, and we've got a guy right here to tell us all about it. He's he's been there, he's lived it, he knows all about it, and with that, we've got the man himself, Tom Morris, Mister T W, right here on the line. How are you doing today? Well, I'm doing just fine there, uh, Pepper. 
How you doing there, Alamo way? Um, I'm doing great. I still remember the Alamo. Been there a few times. Um, you guys just had a, uh, I guess, an anniversary out out that way. Well, um, the Tombstone, the movie, made in 1993 with Val Kilmer, Sam Elliott, um, and uh, Kurt Russell and uh, a few others um, was uh, celebrated at, after 25 years of making the movie. And when's a better, where's a better place to uh, conduct that big party except Tombstone, right where it was all about. And we, um, my, myself and my cast were invited to put on a show, Gunfight in the Street, and that's what we did. Um, that's what we do. Uh, Superstition Mountain Regulators is my group. We perform at the Superstition Mountain Museum in Apache Junction, Arizona, at the base of Superstition Mountain. And if you know about Superstition Mountain, that's where um, Jacob Waltz, the uh, last Dutchman, um, actually he murdered a few people to keep it a secret, but the lost Dutchman mine. <laughs> is where that's located. Um, so uh, we, yes, we did a show and uh, met up with stars. Uh, um, if you use Facebook, uh, you can look at TW, uh, aka, it's Tom Morris, aka TW, my Facebook page. And the Superstition Mountain Regulators is another Facebook page of our group. Um, so, what other questions you got for me there, well, Pepper? Well, if people look, if people are looking up on the internet and they they run across Tom Morris and they see the, the gunfight we actually do, and they look, they go, and they look, they look about two or three times and they think, "Am I looking at Virgil Earp?" Because as far as the movies go, the history goes, you guys are twins. Well, that's the rumor, as my friend Doc Holliday would say, and. Uh... Uh, it reminds me um, of our one of our cast members, Ryan Horbach. Uh, great, great guy. He lives here in Mesa in the Phoenix area in Arizona. Um, he's uh, he's the best Val Kilmer looking character for Tombstone the movie since Val Kilmer himself. And he's uh, one of my cast members, and we do uh, scenes out of the movie Tombstone regularly. Um, and he's one of the lineup. And, and I've seen great guy. And and I've seen I've uh, seen I've seen the guy you're talking about. I've I've seen you've got a, you've got your header out there, and I see the guy, and I looked at it the other yep. day, and I, was, I had to look twice. I was like, wow, that that guy is matching up. Yep, we we do have a a, a really good lineup. Uh, like I say, we have 14 cast members, and uh, oh, talented! It's amazing. Our, our cast. I mean, I don't know how much time I got to talk about a few of them, but uh, myself, I'm a Air Force veteran, Vietnam War, uh, aerospace engineer. Uh, my wife's retired uh, travel world travel agent, uh, Tyson Alexander, who plays Wyatt. Uh, he's a 10-year Marine veteran, uh, Afghanistan uh, war hero, um, uh, helicopter pilot. Um, Colt, uh, he plays our Morgan. He's a um, uh, uh, two and four man Olympia bobsledder. And when he retired from competing at 26 in the 70s, he became a coach and traveled to, with the Olympic team throughout the world as a coach for bobsledding. Uh, his wife, uh, Peggy Turner, she's an executive for Arizona State Education. Um, Mindy Fox, our uh, Abigail, uh, cute thing i'm she's um she's our uh, cute and talented big time she's our uh uh retired well she was a th third grade teacher now she works for a big tax firm um ranger uh, i call him that because he's an arizona ranger uh -huh. uh, bona fide him and his horse um and we've got a few other cast members um but they are something amazing we're, we're all, we just do a heck of a job out here in Arizona, and we just love to uh, perform for the audience. I just love to see the smiles on their faces, 
as we really of the old west and and bringing that up the old west and you know bringing in the old west and the military combined uh i'm part of an, of, of an organization called warriors and rodeo and you might want to check that out as well that's a I, that's a group that's for, interesting um tombstone is uh con, is dubbed the second amendment city now and uh, we do veterans uh, tributes and uh, uh, about that to keep the Second Amendment alive and keep our freedoms and our rights. Um, we're all for that. You bet. All right. Now, if you go back a little bit before the reenactments and before the tombstone, what is it about that era and the tombstone era and the Old West that draws you to it? Well, I think, and it's probably an age group thing. So I'm talking about older folks. Um, uh, you know, on television and movies, uh, Westerns were a huge part of entertainment. And, um, and it's not just a Western. It's about what the old West, what these cowboys and lawmen were all about. Uh, uh, the cowboy way, um, the cowboy code. Uh, there was right and wrong, uh, good and bad, none of this in between nonsense. People knew where they stand. And if they broke the law, they knew the consequences. And uh, there was no uh, uh, kidding around. You were hung by the neck until your feet stopped kicking or you were shot where you stand. And that's uh, more or less, I'm not pushing violence, mind you, but uh, with some of that around these days, there'd be a lot less violence, I believe. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, it would it would be a lot a lot less BS you see on TV right now in today's oh, times yeah. if if there was a little bit more of that. So yeah. people are just they're too confused. Yeah, that's probably a good simple way of putting it. They're too confused at what's right and wrong, good and bad. Uh, and it's 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 sad. Um, I try to live my life according to the old West, uh, in that it's simple as possible, less confusion. Uh, if I see something wrong, I'll speak up about it. Yeah. I might be I might not be politically correct, but politics has got nothing to do with it. Right. Right. All yeah. right. Well, I tell you what, Tom, we're we're running up on the clock. So, do you have anything coming up? Matter of fact. I want to throw this out right quick. The, the photograph that the viewers are looking, checking out, is a Kelly Gatlin photo from laloosephoto.com is what they're checking out. Uh, do you have anything coming okay. up out that way that the folks can check out or a website for people well, interested in traveling Well, there's Doc Holliday. Doc Holliday, I didn't mean to interrupt you, uh, um, but I want to make sure I get this in. Doc Holliday is in Tombstone uh, coming up, uh, I believe it's the first weekend in August. I mean, uh, Google that to check. My wife is the one that keeps the calendar, and she's not with me at the moment, uh, AZ Philly. But, uh, yeah, Doc Holliday's coming up. Um, Val Kilmer and Dennis Quaid are going to be there in Tombstone. Right. Um, as you know, Dennis Quaid played uh, um, Doc Holliday in the movie Wyatt Earp, kind of a sequel to um, uh, uh, Tombstone, the movie, um, with Kurt Russell and, and Val Kilmer. So they're both going to be there. Um, that's something that you, if you haven't already booked reservations, it'll be a tight squeeze. Um, then the next one's El Dorado in October, which is Tombstone's uh, yearly event, the largest event that they annually put on. Um, and, uh, but remember, when you, if you're going to drive and you come out west, I think pretty soon Arizona is going to stop you at the border. And if you don't have at least two guns on you, they won't let you in. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Gun check. No, we're a, <laughs> we're a firearm-friendly state. Um, I'm a lifetime NRA member. Most of my cast are NRA members, if not veterans. Um, and with old cowboy guns, you never see anybody committing uh, a, a crime with a firearm with one of those because you, you you won't see those type of folks doing any kind of trouble like that. Yeah, yeah. All right. Period, yes. All right, well, Tom, man, I appreciate you visiting with us and letting the folks know a little bit about 
what you do out there and what's going on out in uh, in Arizona. And uh, we'll see if we can't catch you out there in Arizona in the future. Uh, if you got a couple more seconds, uh, yeah, Arizona, um, anything Old West uh, is happening here big time. Um, there's lots of groups and lots of areas, lots of uh, ghost towns that put on performances and shows. Uh, actually, most of the towns in Arizona grew up out of mining towns of the 1880s and 1870s. Uh, so there's a lot of history out here, and um, it's something to see. Well, we'll let the folks know about it, and uh, we appreciate your time, and we'll catch you down the road. Well, thanks for the call, Pepper, and I hope I answered your questions. And if anybody else has got any other questions, I guess they contact you in the radio show. That's right, and we'll we'll get with you. Okay, perfect. All right, thank you. Well, so, so long, and uh, thanks again, partner. All right, how did you guys like that? A little bit of Old West. You know, we throw a lot of Old West stuff out, but how about getting some Old West stuff from some guys out there in the Old West doing some Old West stuff? Um Oh, I got stories. I got stories, but I ain't got time for them, if that makes sense. Uh, if you go on papershow.com, go to our uh, blogger. There's a blogger link there, or story link, media media release link. There's this story here. South Texas counties are designated primary natural disaster area due to the drought. Uh, agricultural producers and... Uh, Aransas B, Calhoun, Goliad, Nusis, uh, uh, San Patricio, and Victoria counties in Texas suffered loss and damage due to the recent drought may be eligible for USDA Farm Service Agency emergency loans. I said loans. Uh, Produces in, uh, in other counties, DeWitt, Jackson, Jim Wells, Carnes, Cleburne, Lavaca, Live Oak, and Matagorda. In Texas, are also eligible to apply. Um, you have until March the fourth of twenty nineteen to apply. So you got from now till March to apply. If you want more information, PepperStewart.com is going to be the place for you to find everything. You want to know what cattle reports? You want to know what cows are selling for? PepperStewart.com. You want to know news stories in the rodeo world, the farming world, the ranching world? PepperStewart.com. You want to know who we talked to? Previously, <laughs> PepperStewart.com. That's where you go for stuff. Um, that's where you got to go. If, if you've never been to the website, I don't know what you're wasting your time doing because that's where all the information is. But I got some other information right here that I think is kind of funny. Uh, officials in an Egyptian zoo are denying allegations. The two zebras <laughs> on display are, in fact, donkeys <laughs> painted with black and white stripes. Uh, Muhammad snapped photos at the International Garden Municipal Park in Cairo after he noticed two zebras on display appeared to be donkeys painted to look like zebras. <laughs> I don't know, you tell me. Is that a donkey painted like a zebra or is that a zebra? Because a zebra and a donkey look the same other than stripes in the tail. Uh, the photo which went viral shows the animal's Stripes appear to be smudging. A veterinarian who analyzed the photos said the coloring of the faces did not align with the normal zebra appearance, and their stripes do not appear to be consistent. Uh, Muhammad, the zoo director, told local radio station that none of the animals in the facility are fraudulent. Uh, I guess the whole reason for this is because <laughs> um, a Chinese zoo came under fire in 2013 when a sharp-eyed visitor noticed an animal labeled as a lion was, in fact, just a fluffy dog. <laughs> um, the People's Park of wherever this is at said the Tiberian Mastiff was temporary replacement for the zoo's real lion, which is way to breeding facility. So a, a zoo in China got busted with a big fluffy dog replacing the lion for a few days. So now everybody thinks they're fake. I've seen donkeys. I've got donkeys. I've seen zebras. I don't have a zebra, but I've been to the exotic sale many a times. Uh, my aunt had some zebras. I will tell you the tail was different on a zebra. So, 
this does not look like a donkey to me. I guess it's the I don't I guess it's a zebra. I just know that donkeys' tails are different. So as far as I know, that's a zebra. But I will tell you this. I'm not a donkey expert. I may be an ass, but I'm not a donkey expert, if that's what you want to know. Um I just <laughs> I just think that's funny. You went to the zoo and you're like, you know what? That is that's his donkey painted like a zebra. I don't think so. Um Oh man. There was a guy in Texas. I don't know if you guys seen this on the news. They probably made probably went went viral on the news. But some some idiot and yeah, I can say that. Some idiot, because you've got to be an idiot to do what they did. And two Texas men, they admitted to stealing a shark from an aquarium in San Antonio, and they hit it in a baby stroller. It happened on Saturday, and they were caught on a surveillance camera at the San Antonio Aquarium. The video showed the two men standing over the aquarium, grabbing the one-and-a-half-foot longhorn shark. Of course, you got to have a longhorn shark in Texas, right? Out of the water with their bare hands, they nodded at each other, stuck it in the uh, in the uh, baby carriage, and rolled it out the door. And if that didn't make it worse, there was a picture on Craigslist. Somebody tried to sell that. They tried to sell it on Craigslist. That's not going to happen either. Um, but they, they got busted. They were busted. You know, the, the Aquarium employees got their license plate number. They, they knew who they were. They gave it to the police. The police talked to him, and he got it back. Now, there was, an ad, like I said, Craigslist, an ad on Craigslist for this shark for $300. Somebody posted a, a shark just like this. may not be the same one, but it looked awful close for $300 bills. I don't, I don't get that. What? For one, it's a shark. What? Who? It must be something... In, must be something in the river at the river walk because who in the right mind thinks you know what? Let's let's go to the aquarium. Let's steal a shark and then sell it on Craigslist. I don't know. It's it's got. I don't know what's wrong with these people today. People today make no sense. I watched the news. I saw the news today where or yesterday where people are trying to. They they're all upset because they want to make pistols and stuff out of three D printers. You want to 3D print a pistol out of plastic? Do you know what happens when you shoot a bullet? You know how hot that gets? It's going to melt in your hand. Shoot a few rounds of that thing and watch it melt, and the barrel's probably going to melt down and shoot you in the foot because that's what you deserve for being an idiot wanting a plastic a plastic 3D printed pistol. That's, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Um. That's that's got to be if you, if you're willing to print a 3D pistol, you have apparently never shot a real gun in your life, or don't know how real guns work, as far as temperatures, heats, and function. Because I've been around firecrackers, firecrackers, bullets, guns, kind of works the same way. Boom. I'm not gonna test that out and be like, you know what? I'm going to go print this pistol off in my new 3D printer, and I'm going to go shoot stuff. And if it blows up in my face, I guess that's what happens with 3D printers. I don't know. Are you going to take that chance? I'm not. But who is going to take a chance is this guy or girl. Lifeguards in a New Jersey beach recover something floating in the water. Turns out to be a mysterious message in a bottle. No, it is not Christina Aguilera. She's, it's not a genie in a bottle. It's a message in a bottle. Tim Goldstein, a 12-year veteran of Harvey Cedar Beach Patrol, said he and a colleague, Sean O'Mara, fished the green wine bottle out of the ocean when they spotted it floating near the swimming area. We thought it was, we th- we thought it was going to be something special. Uh, I didn't, But I didn't think... Things like this act like, what? Wait a minute. Wait a minute, dude. Tim, you're giving missed signals here. You said you thought it was going to be special, and then you also said it didn't think things like this actually happen. You're not making sense, Tim. Uh, the Beach Patrol posted photo of the bottle right here looking at 
The bottle contained two handwritten letters from an author who identified herself as 18-year-old Amanda of Springfield. Um, with no home state listed. The letter dated April 20th of 2017 dealt with Amanda's feelings of a of teenage isolation. She's 18. What teenage isolation does she have as an 18-year-old? Most of the 18-year-old kids today are spoilt rotten brats. I know. I've got a 16-year-old that's a spoilt rotten brat. That it's a good thing. Well, I'll just leave it at that. But there's a sound I heard as a child. Just, and you knew, shut your mouth and stop. I'll leave it at that. Um, anyhow, this 18-year-old who was feeling isolation. I would consider myself a bit of a black sheep of society, she wrote. I have my own tastes and interests that others would find out of the ordinary since they're so accustomed to the hipster look and having their playlist filled with raunchy rap songs. Sounds like a barrel racer. Uh, the lifeguard said in the, in the letters listed in the email, uh, but it's difficult to make out. They're not sure if they, what? If they put it incorrectly when re trying to reply. Oh, okay. I missed that myself. Anyway, there's an email address on the letter. They're going to try to email them back. All right. Um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna run this video for you because I don't have the time. But uh, charter boats lined uh, Virginia Channel in the rain to protect dozens of wild ponies making their annual pilgrimage across the water. The 93rd annual pony swim um, took place on Wednesday as more than 50 ponies swam across the channel under the guidance of the Saltwater Cowboys group of 50 riders. Uh, the volunteer fire department hosted the annual event. Said the ponies swam the channel during the slack tide, a 30-minute period where there's no current in the water. Dozens of tourists watched the swim from Veterans Memorial Park, where rains left some spectators standing knee-deep in the mud. Mud washes off, but the memories don't. Uh, these ponies were given a veterinary checkup before the swim and paraded through town after resting from the trek. They're due to swim back across the island on Friday. The annual swim was part of the local pony pinning week, while they popularized in uh, Margaret Henry's 19 and 47 book, Misty of, I don't know how to say that word, Chinchoti, Chinchoti, Chinchotiga, Chinchota Woda, Chinchaka Chaka Laka, Mocha Choka Latte, I don't know. But anyway, that's what happened. There's a video on the internet, and, I, and apparently what happens is these ponies get swam across, and then they're raffled off and adopted to keep the population under control on that wild island. Uh, crime Watch. I guess I'll give you a Crime Watch right quick. Uh, South Texas reports black Brangus bull missing for property in B County. Missing since March 15th. That thing's been missing a while. Uh, to black Brangus Muley, approximately five year old brand on the left hip with a three, left hip with a three, and left ribs with an E3. No other markings or tags. Does have holes in both ears. Apparently, he lost his earrings. Um, if you got any information, Texas Southwestern Cattle Raider Association, contact them. Also, a 2016 John Deere tractor, a model 6135 with a three, uh, with a a three-spear loader on the front and a rear ditcher blade was last seen July 14th in La Serra in Wellesley County. Information, Texas, Southwest, Texas and Southwestern Cattle Road Association. That's where you tell people what you what you found, what you saw, if something is suspicious. Uh, I don't know what else you got, guys want to know tonight. Um, hope you enjoyed the show. Hope you enjoyed the guest. Um, Next episode, we're gonna have we'll have more guests. Uh, each and every week, we're gonna bring more stuff to you in a more wide range of areas. We're not just sticking to ranch and rodeo. We're expanding. If you haven't paid attention, last couple of episodes we've had actresses, actresses and models. Um, we're broadening our spectrum. We've got some UFC fight stuff coming up. So we're like we say, we're a talk show for the rural lifestyle, but we cover everything because just because. You live the real lifestyle doesn't mean you don't watch 
UFC fighting. You don't watch TV. You don't watch movies. You watch that stuff, and those people, those actresses, actors, athletes from all walks of life, we're bringing those to you because that's what we do. Here on the Pepper Stewart Show, with that, I'm getting out of here. We're all getting out of here. Go to PepperStewart.com and buy a T-shirt because you need a T-shirt. Who doesn't need a T-shirt? Everybody needs a T-shirt, so go get one.